Now, should we talk to Sir Michael Fabricant, Conservative MP, who joins us now? It's hard to know where to start, uh, Michael. I think I'll start with well, this uh, news that apparently... You... I was going to say, Emily, we could start, maybe it's not too early, to wish you and Ben happy Christmas. Uh... Well, early? thank you. Thank you very much, Michael, and to you too and your family. Um, first of all, Rwanda. We've spoken about this before many times on this show because it seems like there are endless obstacles. Now, apparently, airlines are worried about their reputation, so they don't want to sign up to the plan. They don't want to provide carriers. What's going on here, Michael? Well, you know, in the Second World War, we know of at least one German train driver who was executed for refusing to take um, Jewish people in cattle trucks to Auschwitz and other concentration camps. But this is nothing like this. I think that the airlines are just jumping on a woke bandwagon. Let's be clear, you've, you've shown photographs actually on um, film on your news bulletin of what the accommodation is like in Rwanda. These people choose to come here illegally. Those who come here legally will not be sent to Rwanda. Those people who come here illegally will be sent, or some of them will be sent to Rwanda for processing, uh, and their applications will be considered there. And if they pass, they will be sent back to the UK. Uh, but it's meant to deter the boat crossings, and we've got to see it happen. How will we get around it? Well, if the airlines still decide that they don't want to carry on with this, and as Chris Hope said, they might well change their minds next year, then you know what? We'll use the Royal Air Force Transport Command. We have extensive facilities in Transport Command, and if necessary, we'll transport them with the RAF. Yeah, Michael, you, uh, you mentioned there about um, Rwanda being a safe country. There was a story that broke over the weekend about a Labour uh, candidate for, uh, for MP who, funnily enough, was sending children to Rwanda on the holidays, holiday schemes. So apparently some Labour cohorts seem to think it's a perfectly reasonable place to go. But if airlines aren't up for sending them, surely, I mean, I personally think airlines don't have much of a reputation to, uh, to protect, but Ryanair, <laughs> of all airlines, that you should see the way they speak to their customers on Twitter, surely they'll get involved and, uh, and step up for Britain. Well, I think you're right. As I say, the RAF could do it if not. Ryanair, oh boy, I remember flying Ryanair. <laughs> I've, I stick to British Airways. Have I given the, you an advert now for BA? <laughs> but honestly, Other uh, airlines Ryanair exist. so rude. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, I want to get your thoughts on the change of language, I think it's fair to say, if not total change of stance towards Israel. Uh, Rishi Sunak now talking about a sustainable ceasefire. He used to talk about humanitarian pauses. We've also heard from the former Defence Secretary Ben Wallace. He's very much worried that civilian casualties in Gaza may lead to more radicalisation. Is support for Israel starting to dwindle because it's, it's looking like that? I don't think so. I mean, I was a bit concerned with uh, some of the headlines about the David Cameron article that appeared over the weekend. But when you actually read it, it says you cannot have a ceasefire now, not with Hamas, who has said that they're going to re-attack Israel again and again and again and make it far worse than the last attack, and continuing to fire rockets into Israel. So I think what we're doing is looking to the future and saying that Israel needs to be targeted in their attacks. And let's be honest here, the uh, IDF, you know, you were talking earlier about Winston Churchill. My gosh, can you imagine what people would have been saying on social media if there had been social, social media or 24-hour television news, if there had been 24-hour television news about what went on in the Second World War? Israel is fighting an existential battle to survive. Um, look, you know, everyone feels incredibly sorry and, you know, feels that the uh, killing of innocent civilians is mm. wrong. But I'm afraid that sometimes, you know, because Hamas actually hides yeah. among civilians, that will happen. So, Mike, so Michael, talking of uh, Winston Churchill, we will fight them on the barges. What do you make of the, uh, the story about his barge being potentially flogged abroad? Well, I think, I think, as Emily said earlier on, I think that GB News should start a campaign and I'll be the first one to subscribe. Let's save the barge.
Well, you could spare a, a quid or two. I'm sure I'm sure we all could to keep the barge here. Thank you very much for your time, Sir Michael Fabricant, Conservative MP.